Hello everyone, Mini Jota here. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you all to my channel. I hope you're having a great day. I've been planning on doing a series of vlogs for a while, however, it's something that I wanted to wait until I was better situated in the room that I currently am. This used to belong to my roommates. However, I wanted to get everything set. If you notice from my Little Big Planet videos, I was filming on a white background, so I wanted to get that taken care of before I get started. And with that, everything should be set, so let's get started. The goal of my channel has always been to share my passion with others and as such there's always been a show that I've been passionate about for the past 8 years that's been in the air. It's a show from the CW, as you can tell of course from the title I'm talking about Supernatural. The show's been going strong for the past 8 seasons and I just recently heard that the new season's gonna start on October 15th of this year so I think I have a little bit of time to cover some basic information on the show before, you know, in anticipation of the new season. My first series of videos is going to start on the lore on the supernatural world and I'm going to start by addressing each of the races that are known in Supernatural starting with the Angels. Angels have played a pretty pivotal role since their introduction in Season 4 and I feel like understanding who they are, where they came from, what the society works like, it's crucial to understanding the Supernatural mythos. I'm going to try to be as spoiler free as possible. I know that's going to be very difficult only because during each season they do reveal a little bit more about the angels. I think it's safe to say that the information that I'm going to give you is pretty broad, very overall general. That if you haven't seen the show you can watch this without any reservations and knowing that you're not going to get spoiled. In the beginning we do know that there was a god that created all things including the angels of course and all of creation. The universe was created and one of the first creatures that was made by gods were called the Leviathans. However, that's something that I'm going to talk about in a future video. For now, I'm going to focus on the angels who were created a few millennia after the Leviathans. Now, angels were always meant to be a force from heaven that would function as an army that would always obey the word of God as law. God started by creating four archangels who were appointed as his generals. They were in order on which they were born. We have Michael, Lucifer, Raphael, and Gabriel. It is told that only these four archangels are the ones that have seen the face of God directly. Shortly after, the remaining angels are created to serve under the archangels and follow their word as law. Now then, a few millennia after, God decides to create humans in his image and places them on earth. What he decides to do is value them as their most prized creation and appoints angels to protect them, to serve them, and to worship them as if they were him. Of course, because the word of God is considered to be law, all angels approve of this. However, we do have the Archangel Lucifer, who is considered to be the most beautiful of all angels, and also to be God's favorite. He decides to walk up to God and question him on his orders. He defies God and states that humans are a flawed creation, that they are an abortion as he calls them, and that he refuses to worship them, that they are not worth of being worshipped the same as God. As a result, Lucifer decides to lead a rebellion against heaven, which results in a war against Michael, who was at the time the appointed leader among all the archangels, and he led the armies of heaven under his command. What Michael decided to do at that point was to cast Lucifer out of heaven as a punishment. Lucifer is of course infuriated from being cast out of heaven and decides to take God's most pious creation and twist it as an act of insult to God. That he takes a human soul and corrupts it beyond redemption and turns it into the first demon. Because of Lucifer taking this act of ultimate defiance against heaven and against God, Michael decides to imprison Lucifer into a cage forged within the pits of hell, which is locked by 600 seals. Now it is told by the fates that if 66 of these seals, of the 600 seals, were to be broken, Lucifer would be free from his cage and he would gauge war against heaven, led by Michael. If and when Michael and Lucifer face against each other, the ensuing war would result in the apocalypse and of course the end of the world. Now shortly after, for reasons unknown, 
God decides to depart from heaven and leaves the angels appointed as the ones that are in charge. At that point, heaven is described as a society that is more of a military regime with a form of hierarchy led by Archangel Michael at the very top. Then we have Archangel Raphael right under him as his lieutenant. Below that we have Seraphs, which are a kind of angels that are more powerful than your regular angel and have been appointed as leaders directly under the Archangels. Below them we have the angels, of course, and below them we have a third class of angels, which are called the Cherubs. So now we have this military society that's been broken down into factions known as garrisons, with one angel being appointed as the leader of each garrison. Of course, each of these angels would have to report back to an archangel. The mode of communication is known as the Enochian language, and it's a series of symbols that they use to communicate. It's very ancient. Their communication is usually referred to as angel radio. It's a form of telepathy that they use to communicate with each other. This form of Enochian language cannot be perceived by others, however it can be put into written form and they're interpreted by others. In the world of humans, we have humans that have been appointed as prophets of the Lord. What they do is that they are tasked with interpreting the word of God. They are decided by the fates and only one prophet can exist at any given time. If one prophet dies, the next one in line becomes appointed as the next prophet of the Lord. Now, prophets are considered to be of very high importance since they were appointed directly by God, so archangels directly are tasked with protecting and ensuring that a prophet is safe at all times. Whenever a prophet is in danger, an archangel is, has an obligation to go to him and protect them. Of course, we know that archangels are very fierce creatures, ruthless, they're considered to be heaven's most terrifying weapon. They follow the word of God in terms of faith and they have absolute obedience towards God. They expect the same from their underlings as a military society. Any act of defiance from a lesser ranked angel can result in either severe torture or ultimately death. Angels are considered to be some of the most powerful creatures in the supernatural world. They have many abilities, which include teleportation, telekinesis, they have superhuman strength, they can exercise demons by simply touching their vessel, they can communicate by telepathic means. As I mentioned earlier, angels are appointed as the protectors of human race, and as such, they are very much, very much in touch with a human soul. Because of this, they are able to actually touch your soul and read your soul, read your true nature, your true feelings, what you're actually thinking. Some angels are even powerful enough to take a soul back from the dead and put it back into a human body. Of course, that depends on where the soul is located and, of course, of how powerful the angel actually is. In the very beginning, angels were only tasked with watching over humanity from afar. However, as time went by, it became necessary for angels to manifest in a human body into the human world. The way that they do this is by possessing a human vessel. However, this is very different from demonic possession in which they just take over your body. What happens is that an angel must communicate with you either through your dreams or telepathically as you pray to them. It is required that a vessel must welcome an angel into their body in order to become occupied by them. They must consent to being possessed by the angel. At that point, the consciousness of the human becomes dormant, however it is unharmed. At once the angel leaves the vessel, the, so long as the body is unharmed, the human consciousness will regain control and the person will be back to normal. Now this is for regular angels, however, archangels are the exception because of the enormous power that an archangel possesses, a regular human vessel is unable to contain all the power that an archangel has. What must happen is an archangel must choose an optimal vessel for them to occupy. These optimal vessels must be chosen depending on how good the particular bloodline is, and those bloodlines are maintained by cherubs, the lowest class of angels. An example of a cherub is a cupid. And there are thousands of cupids out there that work directly under Archangel Michael, which are tasked with the sole purpose of maintaining bloodlines, of ensuring that a certain man meets a certain woman and they get together to 
continue that specific bloodline and maintain the optimal vessel for the Archangels to inhabit in the future where the need arise. Also, angels are different from humans in the fact that they do not possess souls. Instead, they have something that they call a grace. Now, their grace is similar to a human soul, however, it's a form of pure energy that provides them with their angelic power. It is basically what allows them to be angels, all powerful angels with all of the abilities that come with that rank. It has been revealed that removing a grace from an angel is very painful, and doing so will result in the angel becoming a fallen angel, and in turn it will be reborn as human. So it will take human form, and it will retain certain characteristics of a human. It will lose all of its angelic powers, however, it will have some residue of the power that they used to have. So for example, they will still have some sort of degree of superhuman strength, and they can still hear Enochian language in their minds, uh, traces of that. Now you might be thinking as to why angels must take up a human vessel at all in the first place, and the reason why is because an angel cannot show their true face to a human. Uh, it's considered to be too overwhelming. They tend to be shaped like beasts. Even though we have never seen the shape of an actual angel, at least on screen, we know we do know that they have beast-like features with angelic wings in the back. Uh, they said that they have up to six. And also some of the more powerful angels, like for example the archangels, they tend to be as high as skyscrapers. But this form is too overwhelming for humans to witness, and if a human were to witness it, it would turn that person blind. We have seen in a particular episode that there was a seer who attempted to witness the true form of an angel, and what came from that is that upon her doing that, her eyes were burned out of her sockets by fire, and she became blind afterwards. Of course, as humans, they can become tangible creatures that are vulnerable to every other weaknesses that an angel has, and they have certain restrictions for being on a human vessel. So, angels are still very hard to kill, but there are ways in which you can defeat, uh, contain, or even kill one. For example, there are certain rituals that work against them. We have a form of a blood seal that, of course, you have to form with your own blood. You have to place it on a surface and form a certain Enochian symbol that allows you that when you touch it, an angel is cast away from the location where you are. So it's an expelling, banishing spell of sorts, banishing every angel that's in that particular area. Also, because demons are considered to be below angels in the food chain, they are unable to kill angels by normal means, so what they have resorted in the past is that they can try to exorcise an angel from a human vessel by placing their hand on their face and chant an exorcism spell that causes the angel from leaving the human vessel and being expelled into heaven. We also have something called holy oil which can be used to trap an angel. What can be done is that the individual can form a circle with the holy oil and set it ablaze. What that does is that it forms a circle of holy fire which the angel may not cross. If an angel attempts to do so, the human vessel may be destroyed or even the angel himself may be destroyed as well. We also know of the existence of an angel blade which is a sword type of weapon that all angels are given to go into battle. It basically has the same effect as if a human were to be stabbed, so long as you stab the angel in a vital area, it results in an angel being burned into holy light, and they will instantly die, leaving a trace of their angelic wings burned into the surface where the vessel is lying. And finally, we also have the, the most common way of warding off an angel, which is using Enochian sigils. What you do is you can place the sigils around the location where you are, and then and so long as you place them correctly, an angel is unable to penetrate that barrier and they cannot find you or trespass that location. We have also known in the past, I won't go into too much detail to make sure that I don't spoil anything, but we have known, we have seen in the past that Enochian sigils can be encarved into bones and that will cause angels from becoming unable to track you as well. In instances like that, angels can still communicate to humans by means of going into their dreams. Even though they don't know their location, they can still communicate to them to share any information that they want to. I think that covers pretty much all the general information that I have on angel lore for the supernatural world. 
There is, of course, more information that I want to present and that I want to share, but that's more for future videos, like, you know, the more spoilerific ones that are to come. Please leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Please give me a like if you liked it, and also please subscribe if you'd like to see more. Thank you for watching, and enjoy.